In this video, we're going to take a look at successive transformations. So let's take a look now at everything that we have learned so far regarding linear transformations and how we can put this all together here then for successive transformations. So for example here, the matrix product PQ represents the transformation Q with matrix Q followed by the transformation P with matrix P. And you might have noticed it already then, that this works in a similar way to composition of functions. So we work from right to left here, as opposed to left to right. So as we can see then, we apply the transformation Q first with matrix Q, and then we apply the transformation P with matrix P here. And generally speaking here, the matrix product PQ will not be equal to the matrix product QP. So therefore the successive transformations of PQ and QP are likely to be different. So just something important to note here then, that this matrix product PQ will not be equal to the matrix product QP. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you work through these types of questions here on successive transformations. And the reason for this here then is because matrix multiplication is not commutative. So just a basic property here then of matrices. So there we have it. That gives us everything that we need here then for our introduction to successive transformations. We're not introducing any new theory or anything like that here. We are just largely building on everything that we've seen so far then for linear transformations. So to get us started here then, let's take a look now at two examples here for successive transformations. So let's get started then with question one here. So for question one, we're given this two by two matrix here R. So R is equal to minus one, two, two, and one. And for the first part of this question here, nice and straightforward then, it asks us to find R squared here. So for part A then, just looking to find R squared here. So R squared here is a successive transformation or represents successive transformations, I should say, because we're applying R to itself again, right? So R squared in this case then, that would be this matrix R here times by itself again. We have minus one, two, two, and one times by, well, as I already mentioned here, itself again. So minus one, two, two, and one there, okay? So to find this product here then, we can either just do it by hand, or we could just simply use a calculator. Either's fine. It's pretty straightforward here, right? We just multiply in, um, you know, two by two matrices here together. So I'll just do it by hand. Um, so what we get then is, we get minus one times by minus one, so that's one. We then have two times by two, which is four. So we've got one plus four there for the first element. And then for the top right element here then, we have minus one times by two, so that's minus two. We then have two times by one, which is two. So we've got minus two plus two. I will simplify in a moment here, so I'll just leave it um, in its unsimplified form for now. We then have two times minus one, which is also minus two. And again, one times by two here, we get plus two. And then to finish with here, we have two times by two, which is four. And then one times by one, which is plus one there, okay? We get this matrix here then. So we just simplify this here. What do we get? Well, nice and straightforward, right? One plus uh, four here, that gives me five. Minus two plus two, they just cancel, I get zero. Same again here in this bottom left uh, corner here, so zero. And then finally, four plus one gives us five there, okay? We get this matrix here then of five, zero, zero, five here. And that is for R squared then, as requested here in part A. So nice and straightforward, that gives us the solution for part A. Now for part B then, just a nice little follow on here. It says describe the geometric transformation represented by R squared here. So for R squared then, as we can see, we've got this matrix here of five, zero, zero, five. So in that case then, let's write this down again here. So five, zero, zero, five. Well, this is of the form then of, I've got A, zero, zero, A here, okay? And this matrix here then, this represents an enlargement. We have an enlargement here then. We have an enlargement with center zero, zero, or center zero, zero, with a scale factor of A here, okay? With scale factor, 
it's with a scale factor of a here. Okay. So in that case, then, if we apply that to our matrix here, in that case, then we have an enlargement here. We have an enlargement here. Again, we center a zero, zero here. An enlargement with center zero, zero, with scale factor here of positive five, right? So A is equal to five. So with scale factor here of five. Okay. With scale factor five. And there we have it. So hopefully it's nice and straightforward there. That gives us the solution to question one. So to finish with here, then let's just take a look at one more question. So we have question two here. And for question two, we have the matrices A, B, and C, and they represent the linear transformations of A, B, and C respectively. So we can see the matrix A here, the matrix B, and then finally the matrix C here. So for this question, it says find the single two by two matrix representing each of the following combined transformations. Now this question here is really just assessing whether you understand then the order here in which we apply successive transformations. So for the first part here then, we have C followed by A. Now a common misconception here would be that the matrix product to represent these combined transformations here would be the matrix product of C A here. But this is incorrect because remember, the successive transformations here and the, the way that we apply these transformations is similar to composition of functions. We work from right to left as opposed to left to right. So in this case here then, this matrix product of C A, that would be the transformation of A followed by the transformation of C, right? Now, given that we have C followed by A, and in that case, our matrix product here will be AC. Okay, so we have the matrix product AC here. In that case, then we have the matrix A here, which is 4, 0, 0, 4. We've got 4, 0, 0, 4. And then we times this here by the matrix C, which is 0, 1, minus 1, 0. So 0, 1, minus one and zero here. But it's up to you, you can just do this by hand if you want to. I would just simply recommend using a calculator here to find these products, right? So in that case then, what I get here is obviously a two by two matrix, right? So in that case then, what we get here is zero, four, minus four, and zero there. Okay, so that gives us the solution to the first part. So now if we move on to the second part here, we have B followed by C. So again, a common misconception here would be to write the matrix product as BC. But again, this is incorrect here. So in that case, then our matrix product here will simply be CB. Okay. So in that case, then we have 0, 1, minus 1, 0. So 0, 1, minus 1, 0. Let me times this by B here, which is minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So we have minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1. Okay. And again, to find this product here, just simply use your calculator, right? If you do this correctly here, what you should get then is 0, minus 1, 1, and 0. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution to the second part here. And then finally, for the third part, we have A followed by A. So in this case here then, for this successive transformation, similar to the previous question then where we had R squared, in this case here, this will simply just be A squared, right? Because it's A followed by A. So it's A, A, which is just A squared, right? In that case then, obviously it doesn't matter which way we apply those um, transformations, we'll get the same products either way, right? So in that case then, we have 4, 0, 0, 4, times by itself again, so 4, 0, 0, 4, times by 4, 0, 0, 4. And again, just use the calculator here. You can obviously just do it by hand as well. I'm pretty straightforward, but either way, what you should get here then is 16, 0, 0, and 16 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution to the first part. This one here gives us the solution to the second part. And then finally, this gives us the solution here to the very last part. 
Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to the very last question, question two. And that brings us to the end then of this video here on successive transformations.